Are there green shoots of recovery in the, in the economy at the moment, do you think, Will James? Uh, I do. Uh, I think Shruti Madeira called it too soon, although she was looking at the wholesale money markets when she yeah. said it, not at the, um, the retail market or the consumer aspect. And uh, the country is still suffering from this severe bout of Robert Destinitis. Um, I think when that man goes on television and says the recession's over, everybody will go out tomorrow morning and sting, you know. So I, uh, I think she was, she was right, the little bit of movement um, about two months ago in wholesale money availability, a bit more liquidity in the game, but not that anybody here or me or you would feel. Where I think it's changed for the better is uh, three big stats coming out in March. One, uh, the cash balances of the FTSE 100 have never been higher for two and a half years. Now, the upside of that means that they're hoarding cash that they can afford to, which means that they're not losing money. Downside of it, it doesn't mean that means it's not dribbling down into the supply chain. <coughs> it doesn't stimulate small business. Second is that selling houses, and, and, and we are still a homeowning democracy, and we still have house building as one of the great weather veins of our economy. And uh, selling houses at anything under half a million anywhere in the country. They've had their best year for 18, best, best month for 18 months. Now that's seriously important, it all, because it means that there's money available to do it as well as an inclination and confidence. And thirdly, manufacturing exporters, driven primarily by weak sterling and therefore cheaper products around the world that are British, uh, manufacturing exporters have had quite a good quarter, not brilliant, but much better than when it fell off the cliff between September and December. The quarter from January through March has been uh, better by, by a quantum leap. So, out of that, when I say green shoots, yes. Would I say it's going to get appreciably better during 09? Certainly not. It's going to be bloody. It's not going to be a pleasant year. But do I think that we're sort of out of the huge fall and we're coming down to sort of the bottom of the hockey stick? Yes, I do. And then, it's a slow for 2010. So we're not going to go back into, oh, isn't this wonderful? But we are actually, I think, bottoming out in the economy. Do you know, I sat, I sat next to a head teacher of a big comprehensive, and she's one of the most successful head teachers in Britain. And there she is, she's going to have a pay rise this year, which most of the country isn't. She's going to get a bonus, and she thoroughly deserves it, because she's turning around a crap comprehensive into a good one. She is probably in the most secure job in Britain. She told me she was on a tracker mortgage, which means that money for her, she's probably got more disposable income in her pocket than she's had for five years. And she told me she cancelled the order for the car and they weren't going to have a holiday. And I said, why? She said, because Robert Peston said last night that we're all going to bust. Now, that is a woman who is seriously competent, good in her job, has more money in her hand, and, and prices are falling. And, and prices are falling, so she's also in operating the market where she can do stuff. Why won't she? She has no confidence. Mm -hmm. Government spending per se is not going to get us out of recession. It's how it's spent and where it's spent. And I would contrast two things. One is the borrowing in and the infusion into the financial sector, which no one wants to have done, but I think the government did absolutely the right thing. We could have an argument about timing, but I think they did absolutely the right thing. It wasn't where I'd like to be, it's where the nation had to be. Secondly is using government as a procurer and therefore a stimulator of orders, both services and manufactured goods. We actually don't do that well. The, the procurement process <coughs> is much better, more sophisticated and mature in France or in Germany. It's not very good in America, by the way. The Anglo-Saxon economies don't do procurement very well. And I don't mean the big capital projects. I mean the routine day-to-day. -day. A lot of waste. A lot of waste. Thirdly is the Hoover Dam. You know, Roosevelt, New Deal, Roosevelt, God, the Hoover Dam was the symbol of big government spending to create huge and um, huge employment in, uh, in America in the, uh, uh, in the middle of the Depression. And that here, upside, it will add to the productivity of the country, you'll get big infrastructure stuff done, and they're doing it, and it's working. Downside is that you don't, you don't change the economy in 12 months doing that, that's a five to ten year out, and we have a planning regime that belongs to 1947. And if someone's going to tell me that the greater spotted toad is so rare in this country that it holds up planning applications, why is it on every building site in the land? That's what I want to know. The clever, the clever governor of the Bank of England, the call to make, which God, God help him, because you know, none of us could make it, and that is the day you put up interest rates, so you don't choke off demand, but you do choke off inflation. I, I think it's even worse. Do you worry about the image of business? 
I, I certainly do. Um, I, I, before all of this crisis, you know, some examples. The average employer in Britain does not wear a sheepskin jacket, get no Rolls Royce, smoke a cigar, and shout, you're fired. <laughs> and, I, and anybody who tells me The Apprentice is anything but entertainment, get real, it is not a business programme, it's not reflective of business either. <laughs> Secondly, I, I, have you ever noticed that whenever a soap opera has ever put a businessman on it, he's always the crook? <laughs> yeah. There's only ever been one businessman on the Archers and he was a crook. In, in EastEnders, they actually killed one and put him at the bottom of the Thames. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, the media, always, politicians, media, environmentalists, educationalists, all think business is at it every day. And they don't think that these people here can get wealthy, honestly. And I, and I, I once asked a group of people at the front, I put up um, Jean-Pierre Garnier, who was CEO of BlackSmithKline, fabulous business, wonderful CEO, stonking great bonus, right? This is before all the bonus stuff just now. And I put a photograph of David Beckham, who, in my knowledge, at the national level, has never won anything. And that, well, he hasn't. <laughs> won lots of Manchester United, he's never won a thing for his country. And, and I said, can you explain to me why when this guy gets bonuses and everything else, you, none of you mind. When the guy from that says with guy who's adding wealth to this nation gets bonuses, you all want to put him down in, in, in seven tons of lead at the bottom of the river. And this bloke on the front said, well, that's easy. I could do John Paul Garnier's job any day of the week, I just don't. I couldn't kick a ball like Beckham. <laughs> <laughs>